Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Mirror Dungeon solo video. Today we'll be using none other than Blade Lineage Faust. Being a Blade Lineage identity, she is obviously a poise identity and a pretty powerful one at that. She has decent poise count generation, which makes it unlikely for her to accidentally kill her own poise stack, though for her to reliably gain poise potency, she's more so reliant on outside sources than within her own kit. The only way for her to gain poise potency is for her to win a clash with her skill 3 while also having a lot of poise count as it will convert some of it into potency. With this being her only real source, she is heavily dependent on Blade Lineage Mersault and Don Quixote to give her the poise potency she needs. One might assume that being unable to reliably build a decent poise stack without help would make a dedicated poise identity not a very good one, but despite this she's still good all thanks to her unique status effect of Red Plum Blossom. Red Plum Blossom is a unique type of bleed, which makes an enemy 10% more likely to be crit, and when they are crit, they gain bleed. But more importantly, it makes critical hits do even more damage. The only real problem with this status effect is that it reduces its value every single time the enemy is hit, regardless if it was a crit or not. If you aren't critting, you're only wasting it, which makes Blade Lineage Faust essentially useless outside of dedicated poise teams. Starting the runoff, we pick Cigarette Holder and Stone Tomb for our starting gifts, and choose the Forgotten for the first floor. We also find Late Bloomer's Tattoo and Wound Claret early on, before making it to the boss against G-Corp. G-Corp is only really a problem because of Faust's default gluttony weakness, but we start with just enough ego resources to enable us a single use of Everlasting and turn that off. Even after this though, we are still weak to the General's blunt damage and he ends up staggering us as a result. Fortunately, we manage to survive and can take out most of the bugs and end up stalling for 30 plus turns to, in order to heal all the way back to full health. We take Ornamental Horseshoe for a reward and receive Pendant of Nostalgia as a bonus before heading into Lake World for the next floor. Here we buy Coffee and Cranes, Carmilla, Painkillers, and an extra skill 3 before making it to the boss against the Twin Hook Pirates. There's not really a whole lot to say about this fight. We are fatal to Lust damage, but with how little attacks the enemies start with, and us having activated all of our support passives, it's pretty easy to just simply ignore. Even though the pirates have a slash resistance, a single crit is usually enough to stagger them, and the following coin nearly, if not outright, just kills them, resulting in a pretty fast and efficient fight.
사냥이 성공적이었네요. 근데... 소장님이 보고 계셨다면 좋았을 텐데 평소에 제게 싸우면 어떤 점도 없을 거라고 보고 계셨거든요 We take Nebulizer as a reward and head into Piercers and Penetrators for the next floor. Here we fuse Awe and find Illusory Hunt before making it to the boss against the Drenched Gossipium. This entire boss's main gimmick is absolutely hard countered by the support passives of both Princess Rodia and Feng Hun Hong Lu. Bleed is literally a non-issue when you have those two on your team. The biggest threat that the Gossipium poses is actually our Lust and Gluttony fatality. We could easily turn them off by just using Fluid Sack, but being that we already hard counter the boss with our support passives alone, I choose not to do that. We managed to get through the first two turns without staggering thanks to a few lucky Tails rolls, and on the third turn the Gossipium uses a powerful skill which normally you have to use an Ego to clash with as it gains a ton of clash power if you have the most bleed. But because of our support passives when we clash with it, we have no bleed, and as such it does not gain any of the extra bonuses, allowing us to beat it with only our skill 3 instead of an ego. We end up getting staggered after this thanks to our weaknesses, but the Gossipium kindly negates that for us, allowing us to stagger him in turn and finish the fight. We take Tamara's fortune for our reward and head into the Evil Defining for the next floor. Here we buy Emerald Elytra, Prejudice, Special Contract, and an extra skill too, while also finding First Aid Kit and Artistic Sense. We end up fusing Endorphin Kit before making it to the boss against Ahab. One of the best ways to beat this fight is to willingly get staggered on the first turn. As long as you have a method of healing, it's a perfectly valid strategy that more or less guarantees victory 100% of the time. I, however, attempted to beat the fight without getting staggered at all, and started the fight by using Fluid Sack to gain its two permanent protection. Unfortunately, this didn't work, and with our blunt fatality, Ahab ended up staggering us anyway on the second turn. Painkillers plus Fluid Sack equals a 50% damage reduction whenever you're staggered, so really, it isn't that big of a deal, and once we recover, we can clash with everything, trivializing the rest of the fight and winning with no other issues.
이런 건 몽둥이가 약이지. 그렇게. We take the hag's leg as our reward and receive old wooden doll as a bonus before heading into poised breathing for the final floor. Here we buy imposed weight, phlebotomy pack, peace of a relationship, and faith while also fusing the guiding gas lamp before making it to the final boss against the dream devouring silt current. This big fish is easily the hardest boss in the entire run. If he rolls exclusively tails, we can survive the first turn without getting staggered with a grand total of 2 HP. This of course is nearly impossible to achieve, and as a result, staggering is inevitable. Unlike previous encounters though, getting staggered on the first turn is a death sentence against the slip current. His skill, Blind Obsession, not only does a ton of damage on its own, but also inflicts Sinking Deluge, which will almost always kill you. With all that said, one might assume that this fight is impossible with an identity like Blade Lineage Faust. Well, not necessarily impossible, but has a less than 1% chance of success. And initially, I had thought that too. That was until I realized I was being an absolute moron and this fight is actually incredibly easy. You see, I was under the assumption that corrosion was impossible. Normally, you need a minimum of two turns in order to force it, and with an inevitable stagger on the first turn, well, you can see why I made that mistake. After around 20 or so attempts, I came to the sudden epiphany that, wait a minute, this guy's whole gimmick revolves around sinking, what am I doing? If you overclock a Wa Ego and he attacks with his crashing slit current skill first, he will inflict you with just barely enough sinking in order for you to corrode the next turn. After which, you simply need to get lucky and clash with the Blind Obsession skill and the rest of the fight is pretty free. This discovery essentially proves that any identity is capable of soloing the Slit Current as long as they have a Wa Ego and can end up surviving the first turn. And that's how I soloed Mirror Dungeon 4 hard using only Blade Lineage Faust. She's a pretty fun identity. Nothing too crazy, but pretty good. Red Plum Blossom allowing her to do good damage with all of her attacks really helps her. And while not necessarily making her required, makes her an absolute boon for an, any poise team. Anyway, that's it from me. Like and subscribe to not miss next time where we'll be using this character. Goodbye.